Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is a story of someone getting back at someone with revenge, after being wronged. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. Today's story is, one hell of an omelette. We all know the saying, in order to make an omelette you gotta crack a few eggs. A very down to earth saying with a lot of meaning and truth behind it. I guess you can even apply this saying to revenge in some cases, particularly my story of revenge. A story of revenge so great that it might be one of the best cases of revenge so far in the year 2016. Or at least I tell myself that. In the end unfortunately there was some collateral damage, but hey, you know the saying. I'm a former marine living in a semi-small town that I am not from, trying to make ends meet while I wait for my tech school to start this summer. I've been out of the marines for a few years now, and after partying day in and day out and making ends meet by bartending at various bars around my state. I've finally convinced myself that it's time to stop being a man-child and work toward a stable career. Hence, I've enrolled myself in a tech school. In the meantime, I figured I can squeeze as much as I can out of the service industry until I complete school and graduate. Well, that was the plan, and it still is, but not at the restaurant slash bar I thought it would be. I moved to this town from another state with my girlfriend due to a tragedy in her family. After living off savings for a few months, I decided to snag a job to make things easier to stay afloat. I ended up at a quaint little restaurant, very close to where my girlfriend worked. A restaurant recently reopened by its corporate ownership after a terrible franchise owner had control of it. All of the staff were new hires from the top to the bottom. The restaurant was now full service, as opposed to ordering at a counter. It had a beautiful mahogany bar that meshed well with the theme of the restaurant that was sectioned off from the dining side of it. Great food and even better drink specials. The perfect place for me to make ends meet while I attend school. It was convenient in so many ways. My girlfriend and I could save gas by driving in one vehicle when our schedules matched. She could come eat lunch or dinner on her break and get a discount on food. Things just seemed perfect. When I first started working at this restaurant, management seemed to really like having me around. I was very good at entertaining guests. I brought people into the bar and I was great at making drinks. One night stands out the most. I had a couple walking into the restaurant minutes from closing. Often when this happens, you'll get a server who's upset that they have to do their job a little longer and that will reflect on their service. Not me, it's their money and we're still technically open 10 minutes until we close, so I'm going to treat these guests just like I would any other guest. The couple clearly had a great night and left me a very big tip. The next day I was shown an email that was sent to corporate with nothing but praises about my service and attitude. I assumed it was from the same couple, but who knows. After that incident the atmosphere and management's attitude toward me seemed to negatively shift. Before we get into that though, let's discuss the management team. First we have the GM, let's call him Jack. Jack is a round man in his early 30s, who on the surface seems like a stand-up guy. You'd think he'd have your back until the bitter end when you first meet him. Then we have Nessa, the assistant GM. Nessa's a short woman in her late 40s. My first impression was that she is a quiet but professional woman, does things by the book. And finally we have Courtney. Courtney was the bar manager. I'll explain the quotations a little further in the story. From the get-go, Courtney rubbed me the wrong way. Courtney was in her late 30s and never really smiled. Something about her just seemed dishonest. I couldn't quite put my finger on it at first. Oh, and I should also mention Kara. Kara was a woman about 29 years old, and she was best friends with Jack, the GM. She was the other bartender for the restaurant that would work shifts that I didn't work. In the end, I had nothing but great things to say about Kara, and I didn't want things to end the way they did. But hey, you know the saying. Now, back to the story. After receiving the positive review, I noticed I would get flack from both Nessa and Courtney for little things. They would reprimand me in rude ways without any tact. One night, Nessa out of nowhere told me I was arrogant. Of course, I defended myself, and this caused a dispute that ended up with both of us apologizing. I still have no idea what I was apologizing for, but I just wanted a peaceful end to the matter. Another day, Courtney pulled me aside as I came in for my shift and told me that guests had told her I was giving them free drinks. She tried to get me to fess up to this, and I vehemently denied the claims. I even told her to check the cameras, or I'll have Jack check the cameras. I never ever stole from the bar or gave people free drinks. Then there was the time I came in for a shift and Courtney immediately jumped down my throat for leaving tables a mess. Later proven to be a lie. Before leaving the bar after closing, she says this as she walks out the door from her morning shift, leaving three tables unbussed. It was like something out of a comedy sketch. Another thing that may have struck you as odd, Courtney the bar manager was scheduling herself bar shifts while getting management pay. Odd, right? My theory on this sudden change of attitude toward me from the management is that it may have not been so sudden at all. I don't think Courtney liked me from the start. I remember one time when I was training, I had to make an easy drink for a guest because she didn't know how to make it. She put pineapple juice in a Long Island iced tea. Yuck. This was probably embarrassing for her and I remember the guest making a comment along the lines of, maybe I should be bar manager, ha ha ha. 
Said in a jest, but I could tell that it really upset Courtney. I also was told that by another employee, that during a busy night over the holidays, Courtney told Nessa and Jack that she thought I was stealing from the bar. I cannot verify these claims, but after the conclusion of everything that happened, I wouldn't put it past Courtney. This negative stigma towards me most likely rubbed off on Jack, because surely enough, his attitude toward me changed. I started to feel held hostage and regretting going to work. I felt as though my stature was being diminished behind my back. My reputation was being tarnished. I was sinking in quicksand and had no way of defending myself when all these claims were made behind my back. One shift my girlfriend was on her lunch break, and while I was in the back getting side work done, Jack had made a rude comment to her, or was very rude to her. She wasn't clear when she told me about it later that night, but she didn't feel comfortable going back in there. Her feelings were hurt. I confronted Jack about this and he just brushed it off, and quickly changed the subject by telling me to find something to do. All of this hate would soon hit a boiling point, and that's where the omelet comes in. A little over a week ago, I was enjoying a night off. Me and the girlfriend watched some Making a Murderer, ironically relevant to the story, before both drifting off to sleep. I woke up bright and early the next day, did some laundry and got some cleaning done while my girlfriend slept in. She works two jobs and deserves it. I took a shower and prepared to head into work, hopefully making some good tips. I walk in five minutes early and the managers are all at a table outside of the bar talking. They see me walk in and sat me down. They told me that the night before someone had served a minor some drinks and it got reported to the police somehow. Whew, it wasn't me, I thought. I didn't even work that night and I always ID people I'm unsure of. They told me that I need to be sure to always ID people, and I assured them that I do. Both Jack and Nessa walked off to the dining side. I talked with Courtney a bit and the conversation was a bit odd. She said, yeah, we need to be sure to ID people, and you probably just assumed he was 21. I cut her off and told her that it wasn't me who worked last night. She stuttered back, oh, I meant Kara. Yeah, it was Kara who messed up. Kara, who I really loved working with, but who was also best friends with Jack. So you can assume how things were taken care of. This would have immediately been my termination if it were me in Kara's shoes. I didn't hold any grudge. I was glad she kept her job. After the doors were locked that night, Nessa came up to me and brought up the underage incident. Again, it was odd. She spoke kind of loud but not rudely and told me I need to be sure and ID people from now on so this doesn't happen again. I stood my ground, told her that with all due respect, it wasn't me who served the kid. She said, look, I know, I'm just saying. What were they trying to pull here? I had the next day off, chilling in my apartment all by myself playing Hearthstone, eating like a pig, when my phone buzzes. It was a notification telling me that I need to come into work an hour early because the managers were having a meeting. No sweat, more hours, more money. I continue doing my thing. The next day I go in an hour early as instructed. Once again, the managers are sitting at a table near the bar. They all stare at me as I walk in. Things didn't seem right. Jack tells me that he needs to talk to me. Jack and Nessa both sit me down in the dining area. Jack tells me that he heard that I had a dispute with Nessa a few weeks back and he can't have that attitude around here. He tells me he's letting me go. I was shocked. I told him that me and Nessa already hashed out our differences, and this happened weeks ago. I look over at Nessa and she shoots me a smirk. Well, now you're talking to your GM about it. I felt the Marine in me start to come out. I was getting angry and about to do something stupid. It took everything in me not to throw the table over and punch Jack right in the jaw. I took a deep breath, stood up, told them good to go and walked out, and Courtney was sure to give me a sarcastic bye as I walked out the door. What the heck just happened? This was weeks ago and they're firing me for this? This can't be right. I get to my car and slam my hands down on the steering wheel. I was so angry. I just wanted to call my girlfriend and hear her tell me everything was going to be alright. I grab my phone and find her name and my contacts. I'm thinking to myself how I'm going to break the news. Babe, they fired me for no reason. Jack is such an effing P. Car has served someone underage and nothing came of that, but they fire me for something that happened weeks ago? I didn't hit the call button. I put my phone down. It all hit me at once. These mother effers were trying to burn me for what Kara did. Since it got reported to the police, somebody needed to pay, and it sure as heck wasn't going to be Kara. I peeled out as I left the parking lot, not because I was angry, but because I needed to act fast. If I didn't act fast, they would get away with murder. Most of the people who joined the Marines joined to fight. As crazy as this sounds, this is largely why people enlist in the infantry side of Marines. People like us have a desire to fight, and the Marines is a great outlet. Most Marines love fighting, most of us love conflict. We thrive off of it, and we know how to react when the cards aren't in our favor. We're generally some of the nicest and most loyal people you'll ever meet, but you don't F with a US Marine. I open my door and rush to grab my laptop. My girlfriend asks me what's wrong, and I quickly say, nothing babe, got fired, love you. Grab my laptop and sit on my recliner. She says, what? I just motion with my hands one second as I load up Google. I find the restaurant's corporate website. It didn't have a number for corporate, but it did have the email address of every single franchise in the company. Even better, I thought to myself. So I wrote a long email to a franchise, 
copied and pasted it to every other one. I explained in detail about the favoritism that was happening with Jack and Kara. I explained how Kara had served someone underage, and I had the feelings they were trying to pin it on me. I explained how Courtney would get manager pay while taking tips as a bartender. I explained how Nessa would occasionally have me make a drink, and she would give it to her teenage daughter, who also worked at the restaurant. I provided times, dates, and even showed them the email I sent to our state's alcohol control about the underage drinking incidents to ensure my hands were clean. I explained how an expensive bottle of Jack Daniel Sinatra seemed to have a leak in it nights after Jack had worked. Every bit of dirt I ever saw or heard about, I put in the email. And I let every franchise in the company know about it. I demanded that I get a call back, and I also demanded that I get my termination papers to make sure I wasn't being framed. I typed so fast and things just seemed to melt into place as I made the email. My fingers were my weapon. You don't F with a Marine. My girlfriend is staring at me the entire time. What the heck is going on? I finished the email and explained to her the situation. She asks me if I'm afraid others will get in trouble. I tell her, well, you know the saying. I fill out the application, and the same day I get a call from a very well-known and popular restaurant. They want me to come in for an interview the next day. Perfect. I have another job. I didn't hear from corporate at all that day. It was very late in the afternoon, so I expected as much. The next day I get a phone call early in the morning. It's corporate HR that owns the restaurant that I worked at. She tells me that they're on their way to the restaurant to investigate my claims. She asks me a bunch of questions. I'm guessing I was being recorded. I stayed consistent and honest. She tells me all the things I mentioned in the email were 100% against company policy, but the claims would be investigated before any action was taken. I ask her if they have access to the camera feed. She ensured me that they did. Thank effing God for cameras. She told me to call back immediately if I could remember anything else that was going on. We hung up, and I got dressed and headed out the door for my interview at a new potential job. Well, the interview couldn't have gone better. I met most of the management at this team, and I got such an amazing vibe from them. They even want to cross-train me as a bartender almost immediately. Most of the time, this place only promotes from within. They must have really liked me. So I got the job, and I'm going to try my hardest to be a great employee. Anyways, back to my revenge story. I later got word from an insider that they did indeed try and pin the underage incident on me. Little did they know, I'm laying in bed that same night, drifting off into sleep, listening to Sam Harris's podcast. My girlfriend is sitting up in bed browsing Facebook. All of a sudden, she gasps. She startled me because I was almost asleep. I jump up and ask her what's wrong. She shows me her phone. Ha, huh, wow, I said calmly. I guess things were worse off there than I thought. But D, I didn't expect things to get taken that far. Well, you don't F with a Marine, I thought. I got out of bed and made some sweet tea. Do you feel bad, the girlfriend said? Well, babe, you know the saying. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you liked it, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications.